Hey guys, it's Wasim from Curious Doc. So I was reading journal articles the other day, just as most people do in their free time, and I came across this really interesting paper that hypothesized back pain happens because of a failure in human evolution. They called it the ancestral shape hypothesis, and basically they were saying our spines were made for walking on four legs, as our ancestors did for hundreds of millions of years before us. But when we transitioned to walking on two legs relatively recently, our spines weren't prepared for the new stresses placed on it, leading to a range of problems like disc herniations. In theory, it makes sense, because primates suffer from spinal issues like disc herniations much less than humans. So in other words, the ancestral shape hypothesis proposes that our vertical upright posture places abnormal stresses on the spine which was originally made for walking on all fours. To test this theory, researchers Plump and colleagues did an experiment where they compared vertebral bones from 71 humans and 36 chimpanzees. Chimpanzees are knuckle walkers, so they use their arms for stabilization and have very different spinal shapes to humans who stand upright. The researchers also realized that human bones naturally have a lot of variation in them, meaning they subtly differ in size and shape from person to person. Just by chance, some will have vertebrae that are similar to chimps, and others will have differently shaped vertebrae. So the aim of the study was to see if humans with chimp-like vertebrae have a higher incidence of disc herniations than humans with uniquely shaped vertebrae. To identify disc herniations, they looked for something called Schmalz nodes. Basically, when the soft jelly-like substance of the intervertebral disc leaks out of their container in the vertical direction, it creates a little divot in the bone called a Schmalz node. So once the researchers compared the incidence of herniations in humans versus chimps, they found some really interesting things. Firstly, humans that had similar vertebrae shape to chimpanzees had a higher incidence of disc herniations than humans with uniquely shaped vertebrae. And secondly, the chimp-like human vertebrae had a longer transverse process, a shorter pedicle, and a larger shovel-shaped body than a healthy human vertebrae. The researchers aren't 100% certain why these differences in vertebra shape can lead to disc herniations, but they do have some theories. Firstly, and the one that I found most interesting, is Laplace's law. So we said that chimp-like vertebrae have larger vertebral bodies than healthy human vertebrae. This means that the intervertebral discs between the vertebral bodies are also larger. Now, Laplace's law says that for a cylindrical body, the tension on the walls is proportional to the pressure of the contents times the radius of the cylinder. So assuming the pressure is constant, a larger intervertebral disc will have higher tension on the walls, which means a higher likelihood of herniating. The second reason might be something to do with the shape of the pedicles and the transverse processes. These structures have a big role in stabilization when a compressive load is applied and when we're moving about. So having shorter pedicles and longer transverse processes may make you more prone to spinal injuries. The same group of researchers did another study four years later where they compared human vertebrae to 13 fossils from extinct ancestors that walked on four legs. Again, they found that human vertebrae that were similar to the extinct fossils were more likely to have disc herniations. However, they also found one more thing, which was that human vertebrae with disc herniations and the extinct ancestors had greater lumbar spine curvature than the healthy human vertebrae. To understand why increased lumbar curvature causes disc herniations, we have to look at why we have curves in our spine to begin with. One thing that happened when we transitioned from walking on four legs to two is that our spine developed this S-shaped curve. This is biomechanically beneficial because an S-shaped curve is better at resisting compressive forces than a straight spine. Think of it like a spring versus a straight piece of wire. It's much easier to compress a spring than a wire longitudinally because a spring acts like a shock absorber. In fact, we have three main curvatures in our spine. The one in our cervical spine, which is concave looking from the back, the thoracic spine, which is convex, and the lumbar spine, which is concave again. Whereas if we compare to an ape who walks on all fours, we can see that the spine is much straighter. However, the downside of our S-shaped configuration is that it creates more pressure on the intervertebral discs. If we increase the concavity of the lumbar spine, it puts more pressure on the posterior part of the intervertebral disc and increases the risk of a disc herniation. So both of these studies imply that there was an increase in disc herniations from when our ancestors transitioned from walking on four legs to walking on two legs. This suggests that the ancestral shape hypothesis is true. Although it's not 100% proven since all we see here is an association and not necessarily a causation. However, the basic premise of the ancestral shape hypothesis makes sense. Our ancestors have walked on four legs from that weird fish that crawled out of the ocean for the first time 400 million years ago, all the way up to our last four-legged ape ancestors from 10 million years ago. So for just under 400 millennia, vertebrae were more or less made for horizontal movement with four legs. 
Only with the evolution of bipedal mammals like humans were things like back pain and disc herniation more commonplace. Nowadays, back pain is one of the most common presentations us doctors see in primary care. Something like 85% of people presenting to a GP will have non-specific back pain. And even if you scanned all adults who are asymptomatic, the studies show that between 22 and 67% of people will have an incidental finding of a disc herniation. All this is fascinating stuff and shows how evolution can be great at optimizing some things like our eyesight, but for other things like our spine, there's not enough selective pressure for it to be fully optimized. That's because our crappy spine structure doesn't kill us early enough for it to be phased out of human evolution. Unfortunately, that also means a lot of people start to get back pain as they get older. So maybe when that happens, don't blame your back, blame evolution.